Hi guys, it's Tate here from Rise, and in this video I'll be showing you how to separate your server and clients into different builds of your Godot game. Let's get started. So on our Node2D here, on our main scene, we have a script, which essentially just checks if we're the server, creates the server if it's a server, and if not, it creates a client. And we use just basic code to do this process. So what we're going to need to do to separate it in a build is we need to separate it in the files. So how are we going to do that? Back in our Godot editor, we're going to create two new folders. We're going to create a server. And we're going to create a client. Now let's create scripts for our servers and our clients. So create a script and we're going to call this server.cs. And our client, we're also going to be creating a new script, client.cs. Let's open both of those in our editor. Perfect. Now we can copy and paste our client code into our client script and our server code into our server script. Look, looking good so far. So now we're going to need to modify this because the server and the client, we aren't going to put these files directly into our scene. We're going to spawn them through the network manager. So let's do that. So we already are checking if it's a server. What are we going to do? We're going to add child to our scene and we're going to call this new server. This is just the file we created up here. And we're going to do the same for the client. So add child new client. This will create nodes for our servers and our, cl our client scripts. But when we run our project, so let's, let's give this a run. Let's quickly build and run our project. That code's not going to know to run. So we're, we're supposed to get a debug if it's a server to say the server was created. The code doesn't know to run. So how are we going to do this? Well, we could put a reference to the server, great server in the ready function. But we want I want to give our network manager, which is going to be shared between the server and the client and given access to the user, a little more control. So how are we going to do that? Well, we're going to use delegates. Delegates are essentially a way in programming to use the observer pattern, which means when we call a delegate, it'll these functions will be listening for that delegate to be called and run. So let's do that. So let's create a public delegate void start service. And we're going to pass in an int port. Now we need to create a public delegate. So public start service, and we're going to call it start service again, just without a capital S. And so now what we need to do is we need to use the singleton pattern so the server and the client can get access to our network manager. A singleton pattern is essentially a way of make it so they know which script they're referencing is going to be the active script. So network manager instance or actually we need to make this public public static so there can only be one network manager instance and now we need to set our instance to ourselves so instance equals this so this sets our instance to ourselves so our server and client can access it so if we can go back into our client and create uh, the ready function public override void underscore ready now we can access our network manager instance and register ourselves to our delegate that we created. Network manager dot instance dot start service. And now we can say, hey, this function is going to be looking for us to invoke this variable. Or not that one, this variable. So public instance start service plus equals create server. Again, this all this is saying is when we invoke this, create the server. 
So we're going to have to do this on the client as well. Public override void create client. So now these are looking out for us to invoke our delegate. So now what we can do is do start service dot invoke. Actually, sorry, I forgot something. Start service question mark. The question mark is essentially saying, if no one's listening, don't run this delegate. Dot invoke. And we can pass in our port. So this all looks good. So let's run our game. So is servers on? We can run the script. And you'll see our servers created successfully. And if we turn if server off, our client should be created successfully. Yep, all good. Now, how do we separate these into different files? Well, that's a build process. So we can go into project, export, add an export of for Windows desktop, and I don't have the templates, so I'll be right back. So we're back and we've got our templates. So this first one, we're gonna rename it to create Windows client. And now we can go into resources and we can change our export mode to export all resources except the ones checked below. So since this is our client, we don't want to export the server. So we can just check mark the server. Everything else will be included in our build, except what we have check marked here. So now that we need to do this again for the server, create Windows server. And we do have a dedicated server here, but I'm going to be using some UI to show the process. So. Since this is a server, we're going to exclude the client. Obviously, on the server, you could include the client. I just find it easier to exclude it. Because then I know none of my server code is going to be running on the client. And you don't want that because that could create cheating within your game. So let's export our server. And I'm going to create a builds folder. Server folder. And I'm just going to call it server.exe. And I'll be right back once the export's done. And so I already realized an issue I have here is I didn't check mark is server when I built, but this is going to be a good time to show that it actually did separate our code. So right now it's going to try and run it as a client because we don't have this check mark checked. So if we go into our builds, open in file manager and try and run this, this will crash. It won't have access to our server code. Or if we so yes it it doesn't have access to the client and so it can't run the client it can't run it as a client because we told it it's a server so if we check mark this on and re-render it'll work so now if we run our our server it'll create our server successfully and we can go into our godot editor and run it as a client and our client will be created successfully. That's all for this tutorial. I'll see you guys in the next one.